Sorry. After 28 years of Terminator Judgment Day, we finally have a direct sequel that follows the life of Sarah Connor after the events of the 1991 classic. But despite everything, the future is not safe. This time, we have Legion, a cybersecurity AI gone rogue, and its creation, the Rev-9, was made to infiltrate communities without a single suspicion. So it is far, far more dangerous than T-800 as an enemy. Let's dive deep into Rev-9 and see why it is one of the most terrifying Terminator models ever. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Stay behind me! What is the Rev-9 and why is it so relevant in the movie Terminator Dark Fate? Terminator Dark Fate has one of the bleakest openings with the death of John Connor. Sarah, the character we have all grown up to love, has to endure the pain of losing her child even after doing everything she can to protect him. While her work over the span of the two movies caused the downfall of Skynet, that did not stop another AI from gaining sentience and trying to destroy humanity. This time, it is Legion, and Legion did not come here to play. Unlike Skynet, which had bulky Terminators that were almost robotic and more of a powerhouse, Legion has produced almost human-like Terminators, more adept at becoming one of us, making them a far scarier enemy. Rev-9 is one amongst many creations of Legion. It is not something to fight with, like Grace said. Rev-9 is built to kill, and it will. With the sheer determination of a Terminator who only cares about its goal along with its several modifications, which make it a terrifying opponent, Rev-9 steals the show in this movie. 22 years after John's death in 2020, the Rev-9 is sent to kill Daniela Ramos, the future of humanity against Legion. With the help of augmented soldier Grace and a vengeful Sarah, we follow Danny's path to survive for the sake of humanity and its future. How strong is the endoskeleton of Rev-9? One of the first features you would notice when it comes to Rev-9 is its endoskeleton. The previous Terminators had their endoskeletons too, of course, but Rev-9's endoskeleton is very different. From the very first glance, we notice that there is a striking difference between the Rev-9 and the previous Terminators we have seen. If we compare the endoskeleton of T-800 and Rev-9, we can see that Rev-9 has a somewhat humanoid design. The endoskeleton, although made out of solid carbon, almost resembles bones, and you can make out synthetic muscle fibers that look like ligaments and tendons, just like our body. You might think it is like the T-800, but it's not. The Rev-9 has comparatively more extensive cavities. You can clearly notice the more significant chest cavity present here. This cavity helps keep the liquid metal of the Rev-9 intact, as in this model, this liquid metal is not only acting as a sheath, but can also give the Rev-9 a more human-like appearance. This, along with the overall humanoid structure of the endoskeleton, makes the Rev-9 far more aerodynamic in nature, allowing it to be more agile than any other model. This endoskeleton is exceptionally durable, and we get to see how nothing seemingly damages it. Various gunfire and freefall from high altitude, these are all the things we have seen cause damage to older versions of Terminators, but not to this one. When it comes to the Rev-9, it can withstand heavy blunt force trauma and deal with anti-tank weaponry and roll it off its back as if it was nothing. The Rev-9 does not stop and for a good minute, you can almost believe it cannot be controlled with how quickly it recovers from whatever damages that our protagonists rain down on it. Expect a big ping, brother. The whole body's a weapon. Save it for the lady. Is the Rev-9 capable of human emotions and behavior? Having T-800 say, Hasta la vista, baby, was the biggest cultural movement in action films. We all remember the beautiful deadpan delivery of the Terminator. What made the statement such a classic was the Terminator's inability to copy human emotions. It was incapable of understanding how humans use their tonal inflections to describe their mood during conversations, which always made T-800 stand out. But the Rev-9 is not like that. Rev-9 is able to behave in a much more human-like fashion. 
From the moment Rev9 comes on the screen, you can see the way it speaks is very different from the previous Terminators. It maintains eye contact, smiles, and almost mimics the body language of the person it is around to disarm them. It does that when it meets Daniela's father, while pretending to be her friend, and once it has disguised itself as her father, it acts the exact same way around Diego, Danny's brother. Rev9 has a subtle sense of humor that it uses when it refers to its whole body as a weapon. When it sets off the metal detector, it also lies on the spot about two tours in Afghanistan that landed it up with a metal hip, which was rather refreshing to see. If there is one thing that describes the Rev9 the best, it would be the term uncanny valley. You can see it has a friendly and casual demeanor, but every now and then the mask slips and you can see the robot-like traits that it has. Rev9 also has shown its capabilities of changing its tonal inflections, as seen in the scene where he gets information on how to get a chopper from the sheriff in Texas. By copying their way of speaking, Rev9 instantaneously disarms them. However, Rev9 has shown a much higher level of intelligence as compared to other Terminators that we have seen before. Instead of killing someone for their clothes, it would instead just copy them, as we see in the first scene where Rev9 is introduced. Later, right before the showdown, Rev9 tries to have a diplomatic approach towards Danny's protectors. It tries to negotiate and get Danny away from them without getting violent, which is a trait we have never seen before. Rev9 functions like a psychopath. It has no guilt, no mercy, and no empathy. It has traces of humanity, but it only runs a surface deep as saying a casual, sorry about your shed, over the shoulder. And it shows no hesitation when it comes to killing several people, such as the security guard at Raytheon Data Center, to get what it wants. It has the highest body count to date in any of the Terminator movies. Does the Rev-9 have shape-shifting abilities? Rev-9 and T-1000 are similar when it comes to this aspect. They both can shape-shift. However, Rev-9's shape-shifting is much more fine-tuned than that of T-1000. Rev-9 needs to be in contact with whoever it plans to copy, and when it does, the person does not survive. We see Rev-9 copy Danny's father, and we see how seamlessly it transforms from that to its initial disguise of a US Air Force fighter pilot. Like T-1000, Rev-9 can use its poly-alloy sheath to make weapons. These weapons vary from hooks, blades, and even guns. But that is not all. The shape-shifting capabilities of the Rev-9 are much more concise, precise, and accurate as opposed to that of the T-1000. We get several examples of it, especially in the showdown when the Rev-9 is pinned against the turbine by Grace and T-800 and it meticulously injures both of them. This poly-alloy sheath of the Rev-9 can also take a sizable, tentacle-like shape that helps it attack Danny and Sarah underwater. Exploring the insane combat skills of Rev-9. If there is one field where Rev-9 takes the game home is when it comes to its combat skills. Legion really looked at T-1000 and said, I can make this so much better. As we have mentioned before, T-1000 and Rev-9 have similarities with the whole shape-shifting bit and whatnot, but Rev-9 really makes T-1000 look clunky when it comes to combat. With its shape-shifting abilities, Rev-9 can indeed turn its entire body into a weapon. Rev-9 can make any part of its body act like a blade with the precise adaptation of the poly-alloy sheath. The nanobots that make up the Rev-9's poly-alloy sheath work overtime to make sure Rev-9 does not take any damage and whatever it takes can be repaired easily. This poly-alloy liquid sheath is almost like a black goo that is somehow resistant to everything. No matter how many cars crash into Rev-9, it still reforms itself back, drop by drop, thanks to the nanobots. Rev-9 also has the ability to separate the poly-alloy sheath from the endoskeleton. We first see it in a car chase scene, where Grace uses an iron rod to pin Rev-9 to the seat of the car it is driving. We can see the rod go through it, and we are sure that will cause some damage and stop this monster in its track. But no, that is when we get to see the Rev-9 split into two. The black endoskeleton stays stuck to the car seat, while the poly alloys take the form of the fighter pilot and attack Grace. Ah! 
What makes Rev9 one of the strongest and most agile Terminator models? For fans of the Terminator franchise, a big gripe over the years has been the lack of a Terminator who struck terror and dread in their soul as the original T-800 did. While T-1000 had its own perks and all, there was something missing. When it comes to the Rev9, everyone can agree in a heartbeat that it is indeed one of the strongest and most agile Terminator models to date. Rev9 can travel through time like most of the Terminators that we have seen. It also has polymimetic assimilation that allows it to copy the person or the material it touches. It has a robust physiology that will enable it to walk away from car crashes and heavy artillery fire unscathed. Along with its ability to split into two separate units and of course can shapeshift and use any part of its body as a weapon. Rev9 uses facial recognition to pick up Danny from the crowd and it has shown its ability to do cyberpathy which allows it to scan through several data feeds in a single go. The Rev9 is way more durable and it succeeds against all odds until there is a thorium reactor involved making one of the strongest and most agile Terminator models. What are some of the weaknesses in the Rev9 model? Rev9 is a rather formidable opponent. There are no two questions about it. However, the Rev9 is not indestructible. It does have quite a few weaknesses that our protagonists use against it. One of the main ones is EMP. The Rev9, just like our other Terminators, is very weak to electromagnetic pulses. In the movie, Danny has to use Grace's power source a thorium micro-reactor that melts the Rev-9 down to defeat him. Other than that, the biggest weakness of Rev-9 is heat and friction. Even though we see the Rev-9 come out of car crashes pretty much unscathed, when it comes to the turbine, the Rev-9 does not stand a chance. The rotating blades of the turbine produce extreme heat and friction. The suction drags Rev-9 in the turbine, which causes an explosion. This explosion causes a lot of damage to the Rev-9 because, when it comes out, it is far weaker, with no poly alloy sheath protecting it, which makes it easier for Danny to kill the Rev-9 eventually. How is Rev-9 finally defeated in the movie? The third act of the movie starts with Sarah and Carl deciding to use the Terminator's goal against it. They plan out a kill box where they will use Danny as bait, much to Grace's dismay, and then use EMP weapons to destroy it. Sarah reaches out to Major Dean for the EMP weapons, but during the handover, they get attacked by Rev-9 in a chopper. A shootout breaks through, and while they get away from the Rev-9, the EMP devices that they decided to use against Rev-9 get damaged. Without those two weapons, they have a 12% chance of winning. Putting all their faith in those numbers, Danny decides to use the hydroelectric plant where they ended up as the kill switch. The Rev-9 quickly follows behind and tries to negotiate with Danny's protectors. When the negotiation did not go its way, Rev-9 resorted to violence. Using its ability to split, it equally fights with Sarah, Grace, as well as Carl, T-800, without breaking a sweat. That was until Grace and Cole forced it into a spinning turbine. The spinning turbine sucks it into the gears and tries to crush it. But as we know, the endoskeleton of Rev-9 is quite strong, and that causes a massive explosion. This explosion incapacitates both Carl and Grace. While Danny believes that they have won, Sarah, who is a veteran Terminator hunter, knows that something is not correct. She was proven right when Rev-9 rose from the ashes. It did not have the poly alloy sheath, but its endoskeleton was still strong enough to incapacitate Sarah. When Danny saw that, she realized she did not have a choice but to give in to Grace's dying wish. Danny uses Grace's power source and operates as an EMP weapon to destroy the Rev-9. Despite its weakened state, the Rev-9 is far too strong for her. At Sarah's urging, Carl reboots and sacrifices himself to protect Danny. He holds Rev-9 down, and once Danny has impaled Rev-9 with the power source, Carl takes Rev-9 down with him, pinning him down until the EMP goes off, killing them both. Did the movie fail to utilize the full potential of this incredible Terminator model? Keeping up with the current Hollywood trend of making prequels and sequels to already loved franchises has been rather taxing on people. Especially with this franchise, 
as over the years, all the sequels that have come out were unable to capture the beauty and the essence of the original. Since Terminator 2 Judgment Day, Rev9 has been one of the most awestruck Terminator models. Tim Miller and James Cameron went all out when it came to designing the whole story and character design. However, the movie could have utilized the full potential of this beautiful Terminator, and here is why. While the Rev9 is one of the most significant and terror-inducing models since the T100, we are barely given much backstory of the Rev9. We need to get the opportunity to learn more about Legion and how it works. With whatever small details that we do get, we understand that the Rev9 was initially made for anti-terror initiatives. This explains why the Rev9 is so human-like and much more capable of being almost indistinguishable in a room of people. Some more details about the rise of Legion would have helped the audience understand more about the Rev9 and why it is considered as something you run away from by grace. As we know, Rev9 is the first Terminator in the whole franchise that can be split into two pieces. This makes the action sequence far more intriguing. However, the director could have used this to his advantage. Unlike T-800 or T-100, Rev9 did not get the chance to make a gruelling last stand, and neither did it give us, the audience, the satisfaction of seeing it go down with a terrible fight. With just an EMP blast, the Rev9 dies, being pinned by the T-800. While it gives the audience a feel-good, content feeling. Seeing the growth of Carl, the T-800 that has turned almost human-like, it also leaves the audience wanting for more, because the death of the Rev-9 does not feel satisfying enough. Despite everything that Rev-9 is able to do, in the end, it feels like the movie underutilized its character, as Rev-9 is constantly brushed aside in the film. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.